Attention everybody, the President of the United States, Julius Caesar, has arrived. Mr. President, what's going on? Oh, oh, nothing, son. I'm just here to watch your speech. Hey, make sure you say hello to my wife for me. You know, so maybe some of your charm will rub off on her. <laughs> Anything the President says. Uh, of course, of course. Well, let's get Ooh, going. Mr. President, oh. what's going on? Whoa. What's going on? Oh, hello. Oh, dude, do I have some news for you? I don't mean to rain on your parade or anything, but dude, March 15th, March the 15th, you better watch out for that day, man. It's gonna be a bad day. I got a feeling. Oh, I can feel okay, it. Okay, son. Okay. I can feel you, it. You, you, you stop right, You keep it real, son. man. Stop daydreaming. Keep it real. Come on, let's get here. Mr. President, man. <laughs> hey, Brutus, are you going to watch uh, Anthony's speech? Uh, not really. What's going on? You seem kind of down. I've just had some things on my mind. You know, with all the things that, that, have, been, that have happened over the past few months here in Washington, it's all been messing with my head, I guess. But you know, nothing you have to worry about. Aw, oh, you're too hard on yourself, Brutus. Whenever I walk around the city, I always hear other congressmen talking about you. You're respected by everybody, and there's a lot of people who wish you'd do more to help them, considering the hard times that we're going through. Oh, you. You're just saying that. I mean, come on, I'm just another guy in the government. Brutus, I'm not a liar. I would never pretend to like somebody, and I definitely don't gossip. It's not like I fake my affections for people. I mean, I'm a politician. Politicians don't lie. I mean, it's my job for people to like me, right? Hmm, that's weird. Some cheering down at the speech. You know, I've been wondering whether or not Caesar, Caesar's been trying to get those new emergency powers. He'd basically become a king. And you'd let that happen? Well, hey, I took an oath when I was elected to defend the Constitution at all costs, and that's what I intend to do. I work for the people, and if there's a threat to the public welfare, I'll stop, I'll stop at nothing to do what's honorable. Now that's the Brutus that I know, an honorable man. You know, speaking of honor, I don't think I could live under the rule of a man like Caesar. One time, Caesar challenged me to a swimming competition, just out of the blue. Since when do politicians swim? Anyways, I accepted his challenge. I had just won the race, and then I turned around to see Caesar shouting, Oh, help Cassius, I'm drowning! Like, really? Do we need a president that can't swim? This other time, he was sick in Spain. This almighty president, shaking with his lips pale, laying down in bed, just helpless. The same guy that gave brilliant speeches to America also cried like a little girl. I'm pretty sure we don't want a crybaby as our president, right? Pretty excited down there. Caesar is like some sort of gigantic man, and we're just ants compared to the power he's getting. It's our own darn fault that he's so powerful. Brutus, why does Caesar deserve the presidency and not you? I mean, think of all the power that's in his name. Caesar. People all around the world turn their heads. Caesar's got swag. He's ripping. He's down in the hood, man. But really, in the end, what makes him so great? Nothing. I, can think of, I can't think of any time in the history of this great country that it was known around the world for only one man. I don't see why we should tolerate this. It goes against the Constitution, against everything that America stands for. Look, Cassius, I know you're a good friend of mine, and I'm pretty sure I know what you want me to do. You know, I get it, man. I appreciate what you have to say, and I'll sleep on it. But until I get back to you with my decision, remember that harming any American citizen, especially the president, is a pretty big deal. That's good. Thanks for listening. Oh look, here comes Caesar. We should ask Casco about what went down on there. I'll grab him. You know, they all look pretty mad. Caesar has that scowl on his face. <laughs> you know, you know, Anthony, you know what's cool? You know, you know what's cool? Fat people are cool. Yeah, fat, fat people. You know, I want fat people all around the Oval Office. You know why? Because you can trust them. You know, right? And, I mean, look at, look at Cassius over there. Look, look at him. He looks like a man who could use a good steak. He looks like a man who doesn't eat steak very much. And you know what they say? Never trust a man who doesn't like a good steak. Mr. President, don't worry about Cassius. He's one of the best men in Washington. Oh. 
I'm not, I'm not afraid of him. <laughs> if that's what you're implying, I'm not afraid of him. I mean, me? Afraid? <laughs> no, fear leads to weakness, and weakness leads to death. So basically, fear leads to death. I mean, if I were ever actually afraid of someone, I don't even know who I'd be afraid of. But you know, Cassius is just a little too smart for me, you know? I mean, politicians aren't even supposed to be smart anyway, right? No, no, that's not the point. He really knows how to see in the people, you know, and he just never looks happy. And he doesn't even have any taste in music. I mean, once we played Nickelback and he didn't even smile. I mean, what kind of man does not smell at Nickelback? You gotta, you gotta tell me that. Man. But anyway, he just comes off as a little weird to me. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, let's, let's get back to the White House. And you can, you can tell me what you think of him on the way there. Let's go. Oh, oh, hey guys. What do you want? What was going on down there at that speech? Caesar looks kind of irritated on his way out. Well, Anthony was talking about giving Caesar, you know, those emergency powers in the Constitution. He mentioned it three times. The people got pretty excited, as you could expect. I mean, you know about the president's 91% approval rate. Give us the details. Well, it was a pretty stupid situation. Anthony started to get pretty excited and started talking loudly about the emergency powers. And Caesar refused, but with a smile on his face. So Anthony did it again, and again. But you could tell the president wanted it. Meanwhile, the audience kept cheering, chanting for Caesar. Some of them were even yelling and jumping up and down. But I wouldn't expect much from a bunch of Republicans anyway. All the excitement gave the president a bit of a headache. When he got up to make his, spe his own speech after Anthony, he said some pretty weird things. But he apologized for his mistakes. Of course, the crowd just ate it up like they always do. They would forgive him for anything, just like they would for any politician. Well, thanks for that, Casca. Yeah, no That's problem, fun. guys. I'll see you later. Well, since everyone's leaving, I might as well, too. I'll talk to you tomorrow about your suggestions. Think carefully, and good night. Brutus doesn't know what's coming for him. It's time to write a few emails. By tomorrow, America will no longer love Julius Caesar. At least, that's how it'll appear. <laughs> I hate Nickelback. Look at this photograph! Every time I do, it makes me laugh. How did our eyes get so red? And what the hell is on Joey's head?